One day, you'll no longer live in that small town you're so desperately praying to get out of. You'll no longer walk the same streets, know the same people, and you might not even speak the same language anymore. Right now, you might not know how you'll get there, but I can testify myself that that one day will come. And on that day, you'll see that God had a plan all along. That the big dreams he placed inside of your heart in that small town weren't a mistake. That even though you couldn't see it around you at the time, you truly were chosen for great things. Just like David being chosen by God to be king, yet having to go back to his routine as a shepherd. Like Joseph having visions of greatness, yet being sold into slavery. And like Jesus working as a carpenter for the majority of his life, concealing his kingdom assignment. One day you'll see for yourself that God was working behind the scenes through every season of your life, including the difficult ones. Jeremiah 29 verse 11, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. You see, our God doesn't just have plans for you, but he has good plans in store. Plans above and beyond what you could ever imagine for yourself. Above and beyond what you could ever achieve in your own strength. If there's anything I would tell my younger self, it's exactly what Proverbs 3 verse 5 to 6 says. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to Him and He will make your paths straight. In this life, there will be many times where it doesn't make sense, where you take a wrong turn, where you don't know how to move forward. But what I'm learning and what I want you to know is that God is the answer. He is the only one who knows what's next. He knows what he's placed on the inside of you and he knows exactly how to get you there. We always try to look for guidance and stability in things around us, but God was always meant to be our source. I came across a quote a while ago that says, God can do more with your surrender than you can do with your control. The best outcome you can achieve in your own strength doesn't even come close to what God has for you if you would just rest in Him. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things shall be added onto you. Matthew 6 verse 33. Delight in your heavenly Father. Hold on to Him. Read His Word to see His perfect track record. Hold Him accountable to His Word. Let God guide you, and before you know it, you'll look back at where you came from. Same streets, different you. Same town, different life. One day, you'll be living in your answered prayers, but until that day comes, don't waste the season that you're in right now. If there's one thing that the Israelites taught us in that wilderness, it's that not trusting God with where he has us right now will only delay the process. There are things for you to learn where you are right now that you'll need for what God has in store for you. God doesn't want you to only have your 15 minutes of fame. He wants you to have a long lasting dynasty built upon the firm foundation that he is. If I look back on my life, it's actually the things that I tried to pray away so intensively that have now become key parts in my testimony. Growing up without a dad, being bullied in school, not being born into a rich family. It's because David wasn't a giant that him defeating Goliath shows God's power. It's because Joseph was sold into slavery that him becoming ruler over all of Egypt allows us to see God's hand. Our power is actually in that which we lack. 2 Corinthians 12 verse 9, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness, so that Christ's power may rest on me. So don't worry. Fix your eyes on God, and before you know it, you will be walking in that one day.